Welcome back to Mythically Alluding. Last time we covered Greek illusions. Today we'll be talking about Roman illusions. Now, the study of Roman mythology is often complicated by the early influence of Greek mythology. I guess you could say that the Romans stole the gods and added their own influence on them. I suppose the Greeks should have copyrighted their own mythology. While the Greeks were more concerned in telling grand stories that explain natural events, Roman tales revolved around politics and mortality. Heroism was an important theme. When the stories illuminated Roman religious practices, they almost always revolved around rituals. Sometimes, these rituals were people sitting in a circle praying. Other times, it was sacrificing an animal to the gods. I would hate to be that poor goat. <coughs> if you listened to the Greek show last week, you'll probably understand what gods I'm talking about. If you haven't, I recommend that you check out the Radio Hannah archives and listen to it. Now, the Greeks were based on human personality traits such as love, honor, hatred, dignity, and more. Roman gods were named after objects rather than human traits. Romans weren't very gender-specific. Greeks focused on the creativity of god than the physical feats. Poet gods were much more popular than war gods. Romans focused on actions rather than words. They viewed warriors as sacred. One more notable difference, aside from the names, of course was the appearance. Greek gods had beautiful bodies. The perfect muscles, the gorgeous eyes, essentially a cover girl model. <whistles> Roman gods didn't have a physical appearance. They were only represented in the imagination of people. For all we know, they could have had one eye, ten arms, and hair instead of fingernails. <whistles> Their names were changed as well. Zeus became Jupiter. Poseidon was Neptune. Hades was Pluto. Hera was Juno. Hermes was Mercury, Hephaestus was Vulcan, Ares was Mars, Aphrodite was Venus, Artemis was Diana, Athena was Minerva, Dementor was Ceres, and Dionysus was Bacchus. Out of the twelve, only Apollo kept his name. Now you probably know that most of the Roman gods were named after planets. Well, that's because when ancient Greeks first began to study the skies, they chose the names for the planet by identifying them with their gods. The Romans later took these names and changed them to identify with their gods. I've been Roman the Net, <laughs> and here are some illusions I've found. We've all heard of, and probably eaten, Mars Bar's chocolates. What most people probably don't know is that Mars was a Roman war god. I guess that means we're fighting against hunger. Romans were one for the dramatics. So it's no surprise that they had a brand of fireworks named after them. The fireworks are called Roman candles, and are well known for giving off a series of flaming colored balls and sparks. In Roman mythology, Vulcan was the god of smiths and forges. A manufacturing company called Vulcan Industries International makes steel products, a very fitting name if you ask me. Of course, we could be referring to Star Trek Spock, Live long and prosper. Or the village in southern Alberta. Our final illusion today is Pluto, the god of death. But, Pluto is also known as the lovable dog from Mickey Mouse. Seems a bit wrong that you name a dog of a kid show after the god of death. Oi, 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 oi. That's all for this show. Tune in next time to learn about some Celtic illusions. Until next time, squawk out.